All right, we're back, and uh, we'll take off from there. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for today. We bless your holy name. We appreciate you. As uh, we go up to this uh, program of today, speak to us from your word. In the name of Jesus, I saw your reply, Pastor Peter. I'm on again. Please go to the comment section and type something so that I see you. Once I see you, then I can bring you online. Yeah, because of... Um, the way uh, Facebook at times uh, works. So I'm trying to... Trying to connect with you again. Please come to the hello man of God. Okay, good, beautiful. Thank God we have been able to do to that line now. I'll be connecting you now. All right. Beautiful. How are you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Fine, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. The, it took this long because of how the network went. But yeah, and it's, and it's awesome. like how it's like I was another on um, I was on another channel that you already stopped. Maybe you think you actually yes, I have to, to stop you. Sorry, I have to stop you because uh, I noticed. Maybe it was uh, a little, there were glitches. Yes, I was, I was just there waiting and waiting and waiting until I observed that it is a rec it is a past one. So I have to quickly look for this one. Yes. Wait, sorry, sir. Uh, yes. Having understanding how these things work at times, it was necessary to, <laughs> to just stop it at that level and restart so yes. that um, yes. Yes. We, yes. Can, we, we can connect. So... It's, it's really nice uh, meeting you again after a while. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, for those that we join up later, we're so sorry for the glitches, but thank God we've been able to connect and um, uh, share with us on this platform. Uh, basically, uh, some might be wondering what are we up to today? Uh, is to talk to leaders. If you are a leader in ministry, not only really in ministry, you can be all in business too. It's going to be the same principles that are applicable. But uh, the overall is to make an impact in the body of Christ so that we see growth in our lives, in our ministry, in our businesses. And uh, in today's uh, session, we have a man of God that that been his passion, and he has been into it for some time. So I'm going to call him up. He's going to introduce himself and tell us what he's been into, because I know there might be one or two pastors that will want to link up with you after now, as uh, you. Uh, uh, I want to feature you in your ministries or churches. So over to you, man of God, tell us more about yourself and what you do before we ask okay. some, you some certain questions. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. I celebrate you. Thank you for the opportunity. I uh, uh, I want to greet uh, those that will be joining us as the commences i greet them in advance that as they join i'm sure that they will meet a very useful part of this uh, conversation i i don't, yeah. don't take this lightly i i really i really appreciate you and celebrate you thank you for this awesome privilege my name is uh, benny peter sadaji i am the senior pastor of equip christian center 
um, my the ministry I'm into uh, aside from the church uh, ministry is basically to support uh, pastors, senior pastors in making the work they do much okay. more easier. And this support is uh, is not finance, it's not material thing, but it's resource information that we help them in basically on how to grow their ministry, grow the church, and what to do with the church in terms of structuring their church workers' effectiveness, the internal system of the church, how these things can be well done so they can focus more on their primary assignment. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, yeah, the primary assignment of every pastor is the word and prayers the word and prayers so but in doing this is not in isolation of the overall organization of the church as long as, as long as there are human beings there the people need to be organized need to be taken care of and this aspect is so demanding and that if it's not properly done if systems are not put in place you see the pastor no matter maybe the first year second year even to the 15th year i've seen even a church of 18 years the pastor is still running around trying to do all that is that are not necessarily should not be his job at that time of ministry yeah so the earlier the better yeah the earlier a pastor get the system right the better so that is what uh that is the area i come in and uh, those of us that God have raised in this aspect this is the area we call me to make these things work, to make this thing work. So that is basically what I do, what I do, sir. So that is who I am, sir. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, from what you just said now, I just remember the scripture that said, "Teach me, O Lord, to number my <laughs> yeah, number yeah, my yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir." So, uh, um, yes, sir. Oh, Pastor David from Kenya, you're welcome. I just saw you joined us now. Oh, I love you, my brother. How is the ministry in Kenya? God bless you. Thanks for joining. Welcome. I would, uh, sir. Because welcome, of, sir. Uh, yeah, in course of the, uh, the meeting, I think I'll call you up to just greet us. Sister Blessing. <clears throat> blessing. Blessing. Right, so, um, is Blessing there? Okay, Hello. man of God. Yeah, man of God. Yes. yes. All yes. right. Yes. So, in uh, Jiffy, can you just tell, give us one word that describe what you do, sir, Pastor Benny? Yeah. Um. One word. One word might be difficult. Might be difficult to put it in one word. But in a short, in a short sentence. Okay. In a short sentence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I support. I support. Uh, basically, two things. Yes. We support pastors in the area okay. of church internal systems building and church okay. workers training effectively. The church internal we do, system building. The church runs as a system. Yes. That's it's what it's every it's pastor it's needs it's to know. Every leader, you need to know that the church runs as a system. Yeah. And if the church runs as a system, it means there are different units, their functions should be well defined, and the pastor shouldn't see himself everywhere doing everything. That's what has caused exactly. so many churches exactly. to remain small. Yes. Exactly. And in remaining exactly. small, a little expansion uh, yeah. cost the pastor a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's everywhere running everything. Exactly. exactly. So what we want exactly. to address today is uh, how, exactly. what uh, kind of structure a pastor should run. Yes, exactly. And, uh, how effectively you should run it so that there is room for growth yes yes basically right, fine. that's true good all right so um pastor david just tell us briefly what we mean by structure and then from there take it up and share with us some things we need to know yeah, yeah structure is um they are you know in every building we call buildings structure so yep. they are the things that put the whole 
put the building together yes. every part of the materials used that is holding the building together is part of the structure of a building so in a church the things that are that is holding the church together that make the church to run effectively these are the structures and uh there are so there are generally some basic ones we know that we know that uh, okay a church has a choir church will have an ushers church yeah. has those who clean church have children department church have these yes basically every church you know have this basic thing but the difference is this how organized how okay. organized are these units running what yeah. are the things that is harmonizing all these units uh, so it uh, is the effective running of all these units that is what we also have this church has a structure they have a system if not some churches have choir they have orchards but they don't have a system yet so having yeah. unit doesn't mean you have a system but having but having unit that is organized to work as one towards the vision of the ministry that is a system or structure okay yes sir yeah we have um pastor ryan welcome i think that's from philippines sorry if i miss the country or india i know you you've been my friend but uh, forgive me for missing your location now we are honored to have you on board too watching us we're talking about uh, building a structure that will make your work easy and uh, we we have him just define to us what a structure is all about and uh, what it takes to have one the church itself is a structure just like you have a building structure and we know that in the building we have blocks and uh, each of those blocks in the church structure you call them um, units or departments so you have the choir you have the ushers you have the prayer band but just having them all together does not mean you have a structure that is running effectively so what we want to be looking at is how do you build all of this into a system how do you build all of this into a system Pastor Benny, we lost you, so come back to this. Uh, can you, if you can come back to the comment section and see something. Uh, when I see there, I'll, I'll be able to add you up. Or let me see if we could go at it uh, another way. So how do you build this into a system? It's very important. Because without building it into a system, you will end up finding yourself running helter-skelter. And not just helter-skelter, you believe in the essential things you are supposed to do every day. You believe in the essential things you're supposed to do, and which is not supposed to be so. Hallelujah. Amen. So... Uh, so just a minute, then we go back. Okay, I can see. All right, let's continue there. And he will come back on board. So, how do you put it together into a structure? Because, like a human being, too, if you see, you have uh, different systems in the body you have the circulatory system, the blood circulatory system. You have the respiratory system, okay, yeah, and then you have uh, the the central nervous system, and what the central nervous system does is it connects all the other systems to the brain, you know, and uh, they all have uh, their different functions in the body, and. Uh, they run as a system and if, if this system does not run well 
you're going to have problems. And you, the pastor, the pastoral system is a central level system connecting with every other system to the head to interpret all the information happening in the body to the head and then the head able now to make a decision to respond. So take for instance, uh, you have the your foot which is part of the mobility system okay uh, match a nail information is sent to the nerves to the central nervous system down to the brain then the brain analyzes it what kind of feeling is that is a hurting feeling so it sends information back to the leg remove your leg immediately because that is dangerous and then you remove your leg so the central nervous system especially the brain oh pastor joe james hallelujah yeah love you brother nice to have you how you doing and how is your wife and the kids nice to have you praise god god bless you so I believe with time I'm going to call you up to say something to be a blessing to the people. And Pastor Benny, if you're somewhere there, please go to the comment section and type so that I know you're there, you're back, and let's uh, have you back on course. Amen. So we're, we're, we're talking about systems. The, the, the body system is uh, designed in a way that... Um, when when uh, you have a issue it interprets and sends signals to where it's uh, necessary okay where it's necessary then uh, you're able to take action that's that's the the work of the central nervous system especially the brain now bring all of these concepts to church just like the body of Christ is made up of different parts, okay? Just like the body of Christ is made up of different parts. We have uh, the church as a system made up of different parts, okay? You have the choir, you have the ushers, you have the prayer band. How do you now run all of this as a system? Now, before Pastor Benny comes back, I would like, to, I would be... Uh, talking to us uh, uh, about that, okay? Number one, you have to define all of the rules of these departments. Yeah. Write it in black and white. Go to Hosea, write, write it down. The vision is for an appointed to write it down so that those that uh, really will run with it. So you have in the choir, they, are read, they should be able to read it and run with it. You have in the prayer band, they should be able to read it and run with it. You have the ushers, they be able to read it and run with it. It's very important. Because if they don't, if you don't have their responsibilities in black and white, written down for them to see it and know what is expected of them, then there will be issues. Because number one, you have your expectations and they are going to be failed expectations. Why are they going to be failed expectations is because they don't know what you want them to do. So for instance, the choir is supposed to be there at 8 o'clock. And you are there seven waiting for choir to come by 8 and they haven't come. Now that's a problem. So you see the pastor running to go and play music instrument. You see him going out to place call, asking the usher, where are you? You have not come, the prayer band. All of that stress is because it's not in black and white. What is the working manual of the ministry with the functions of every department is very important. If the working manual is not there for them to function, they are not reading it to understand their roles. 
the unit cannot work as a system. Now, when you take a car and break it down, it's made up of different systems. You have the mechanical system. You have the electrical system. They work together to make the car move. And when you come down to the mechanical, it's broken down into different, different functions again. Hallelujah. And so in a car, there are so many functions, a lot happening. Don't you see, all you do is to kick and you hold the steering. Now you're the pastor, you are the steering, but a lot is happening in that car. You have the hydraulic system. You have the brake system. You have the headlight system. You know, and each and every one of these systems are working together to make the car run. Amen. You're welcome, Jack. Pastor Jack, oh, love you. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Uh, God bless you for joining us. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, so all of these work together as a system. But there's no how these systems will work well if you, do, you don't have specified guidelines or instructions on how this should work. So the first question is, do you have a manual for all of the departments in your church, in your ministry, in your office? Is there a manual with job description? Then do you have uh, the structure drawn out? Everybody should be able to see, uh, in business, we call it the administrative structure. They should be able to see, this is the pastor, where is his placement in the picture? Do you have a picture of the structure? Then do we have an assistant? Or are there assistants in the structure? Where is the line of command, the, the flow of information and command? Then where lies the finance department? Where lies the choir? Is there all? Is there? Do you have a board of usher uh, of deacons? Are, are they part of the decision making process? Are they or are they advisory pro? Are they just only advisory or part of the decision making process? You see, all these things have to be spelled in black and white. Then the prayer band. Who are they answerable to? Is he the head of the prayer band? And then the head of the prayer band, who is he answerable to? And not just that, what are the responsibilities of each and every head? And what is the limit in the decisions they can make? Because you have to give room for them to be able to make some certain decisions. The pastor shouldn't be the one, uh, prayer band is the one to take all the decisions, choir is the one to take all of the decisions, security is the one to take all of the decisions. You will be drenched out. You will be fucked out. You, you, you will be drenched out. You, you have to specify and let them know. This is the limit you can take decisions. This is the limit of your authority. They have to know. You don't just put uh, people to head departments and at the end of the day, you're the one taking decisions for everybody. No, it cannot work like that. So that's what we're talking about, structure for growth. You have to put in structure that we have the growth of the church. When more people come, who handles them? What's going to be the role of the ushers in handling the new uh, commerce? And from there, who, who follow up from there? Who sits the, who, who calls them and book appointment with the pastor? Because there should be somebody who should be able to call each and every one of them and then book an appointment. Is it going to be a unified appointment on a specific day where all of them are meeting the pastor on a specific day? Or is the pastor going to hand over that responsibility to somebody else? But of course, you know who anybody you're handling, handling that responsibility to should be able to communicate effectively to the church, or I mean, sorry, to the to the to the to the visitors, the vision of the church, and the their placement in that vision. A lot of people don't stay in churches because they get lost from the one. They should be able to know they have a place, and then how can they be co-opted into the family? Is very very important, and you don't just co-opt 
people into the family with that orientation. Some people call it membership class. Some people call it discipleship class. There must be an orientation program that, and in that orientation program, they should be able to know your programs. They should be able to know how they relate to it. They should be able to know the, uh, the classification of the programs. What are the conventional programs? What are the occasional programs? And how they can relate with all of that, you know. And also there should be a package that should build them more spiritually and able to match them into the family. Those are very, very important key points you we, we have to know and work with. Because when these systems are not put into place, all of the log of work comes back on the pastor. So the pastor ends up being the one interceding for everybody, being the one calling everybody, being the one visiting everybody, being the one part of the music team. It can't work like that. Hey, pastor, you will drain out. You will drain out. People, everybody is there to play a role. Allow those that fit into different roles to, to pick up responsibilities and then show them, show them how they fit in, not just fit in, what will be their responsibilities, who they are answerable to, is very, very important. Up to now, um, we've lost... Um, Pastor Benny, I believe it's network or something, but before it comes up, uh, I'm going to call one or two people as we share to also chip in a word or say something. And if you have a question, just go to the comment section and uh, ask any question you have. And after now, we're still going to upload it in different platforms, the video, so that uh, every one of us we will be able to uh, Watch it again, uh, Pastor Shedrach. I love you, my brother. Nice to have you. How are you in your own end there? God bless you for tuning in. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Yeah, so uh, as we're saying, you must have, and it's very important, you must have a job description. We call it job description in the circular. You must have description of roles for the members for, for the departments and then the members of the department then you must have description for the heads the heads of the department there must be head you must, uh, if, if you don't have competent, com competent hands uh, you have people that are versatile one person can head more than one department there are those that are good in several departments get them head different departments and spell out their different roles it's very important there are different roles in every department because if you don't do that bulk of the workload will still bounce back on you still bounce back on you and like i told us we miss we lose a lot of members when we are the ones doing everything it has to be the ones that should call them up every mem every new member that comes to your church needs to be followed up with both phone calls and physical visit and hey pastor you don't have to be the one doing all of that get people to work and make sure you put the right people in the right department of course it's not good you you, you i don't expect you to pick somebody that is a complainer into the follow-up department because what do you expect him to do when he sits with the visitors is to complain about the church it should be somebody that will sell the vision of the church effectively to the people that will want them want to be part of the vision now if you notice i'm emphasizing vision 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 because it's very important People only want to be part of a system that they understand the vision. If they don't understand the vision, they don't want to be part of the system. 
So you should be able to spell out the system in black and white so that they are able to make a decision. They are able to make a decision to fall into uh, the vision. So before I continue, let me bring up uh, Pastor David from Kenya to uh, say something. Pastor David, I'm bringing you up. I'd like you to say something. Pastor David, you can accept and come on so that you say something. Okay, while uh, that is on, if you're able to process, fine. Then uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is assessing the presence of Pastor David. How are you? I am fine. Praise God. I, I thank God. Amen, amen, amen. How is the ministry? The ministry is doing well by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we thank God because uh, His grace is sufficient in all seasons and all times. Praise God. Amen. And how is the work of the Lord over there in Kenya? Uh, here in Kenya, the Lord is helping us. It's, it's not easy without depending on the Lord, but with Ango, He has given us enough grace for the situation. We are doing good. Yeah, you know, everyone you see out there does become something. It's just simply somebody that the Lord has helped. True, true. So without the help of the Lord, um, we, we're going nowhere. Exactly. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about uh, structure, an important tool for church growth. Yes. I hope you, you've been blessed by what we're sharing. Very much. Very, very much. Amen. Amen. So, very um, much. Just give me one or one or two lines of your thought concerning this before we progress. What do you have to sh say concerning that? What we've had said so far. Is there anything you've learned? Any new thing you've learned, or you have a contribution or something you want to say? Oh, I think I lost him there too, again. Well, uh, we'll continue where we stopped. Um, running as a system, you should be able to structure also when you assess what's been done. There should be a system that should be able to help you access what's being done. It's very important. Because if you're not able to access what's being done, then you're going to have challenges. Our Pastor Joseph Kobina, hallelujah. Love you, my brother. You're welcome. God bless you for joining. Uh, we've been talking about running the church as a system, having a structure in place in order for uh, people to be able to work effectively and remove the secondary uh, work on you, the pastor, so that you concentrate on the primary. Amen. You concentrate on the primary because if you're not able to uh, concentrate on the primary, which is just 20% of the ministry activity the rest of the 80 percent are not the primary functions of the past it's just 20 percent which is prayer and the word so we have uh, we have a choir we have uh, ushers we have every so many other departments finances and you can be in all of those places and still function effectively you 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 can be in all of those places and and function effectively you have to be 
in just those uh, primary areas and be able to function effectively. Why there are people running all of those other areas, but it takes a structure to be able to get them run it effectively. Amen. So God bless you. And at this stage, we're talking about uh, how to run it as a system. So we, we said these are blocks, just like you have a building. The church too is a building. And in a building, you have blocks. And those blocks in the church, those are the departments. And there are other things that bond the blocks together. They are all, they all form part of the department. Get each department know their function is very very important so that means you got to have a manual a manual that spells in black and white the functions of all of these departments and then you've got to have heads the heads to have to know their functions each head have to know the, their, their, their responsibilities and the, the, you have to draw the line where do their authority stop what are the things they should handle and what are the things they should pass on to somebody above them or the the set man in the house the the, the visioner amen you know these are very very important um steps to take and many pastors their churches remain small because they lack these things in place they lack structure they lack structure and when there's no structure then there will be challenges hallelujah so that's uh what we've been discussing and uh, we've been discussing with the man of god uh pastor benny peters though we lost him and uh, when you have all of this there should be be a place for appraiser where you appraise what's being done and there should be it should be done periodically it's very, very important it should be done periodically is it going to be caught on quarterly basis by monthly monthly there are the things you should be able to do weekly you, you can't be a pastor and you don't have uh weekly feedback on things like the finances attendance you know of both members and the church workers and these are things you should go for uh, apps or systems or software that should be able to give you in a glance at a glance a whole picture of all the activities that have happened over the week you should be able to know and then the two should be able to compare for you the previous week the present week so that you'll be able to project to know whether there's growth or not now these are parameters that when we uh, there was a time we had crusades you know we had crusades and uh, these were parameters where we plot on i was able to know at what percentage there was an increase and i was glad to know the increase was almost 50 percent yes so it, it made me know there was impact of the crusades on the attendance and also a help planning to know if that was the increase it mean we had new people and we had new people there was a need to set up a discipleship program immediately for those ones and also build capacity for those that will be able to administer them. You know, those, those are all the essence of putting together structures. They are very, very, very important. Amen. So uh, at this junction, we're going to stop here and continue same time next week same time next week and we're going to be putting up uh this particular uh broadcast for you out there to be able to uh watch 
at your own pleasure. And if you have questions, please feel free to type in your questions that we'll answer at the comment section next time. God bless you all.